Okay, the next item of business is a debate on motion 3492 in the name of Jackie Bailey on uh, Anslow protecting the rights of care home visiting. Um, any member who wishes to participate, could they please press the request to speak buttons now or as soon as possible. I put an R in the chat function and I call on Jackie Bailey to speak to move, uh, the motion for around six minutes. Please. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. The 24th of March will mark two years since Scotland entered its first day of lockdown. These were some of the hardest days many of us have had to face, and those of us who had family or friends to isolate with were the lucky ones. And even then, for many people, the weight of lockdown was huge. We did this because it was necessary, because it saved lives, and because it was the right thing to do. Since then, over 4.4 million adults in Scotland have received at least one dose of the COVID-19 vaccine, and the number of patients in intensive care units with the virus has significantly decreased. Football and rugby stadiums are now packed again with spectators, and nightclubs and hospitality venues can operate without restriction. We can meet with friends to socialise, and families can gather to celebrate milestones once again. So lockdown appears to be a distant memory. Yet care home residents continue to face some of the severest restrictions. People living in these homes continue to be the forgotten victims of the pandemic under this Scottish Government. For the past two years, adults living in care homes in Scotland have been isolated from their friends and their families. For them, those hard days of separation are the reality, and the lack of urgency shown by the Government to address this prolongs their suffering. In November 2020, Natasha Hamilton brought a petition to this Parliament to ensure that family members could be granted access to relatives in care homes, regardless of lockdown levels. Natasha's mum was Anne Duke, who was herself in a care home, and Anne's family showed remarkable bravery in exposing the struggle that too many families had to endure. The isolation, the separation, the loneliness, the toll that it was taking on mental and physical health. That story was echoed by people in my constituency, and let me share with you a quote from one of them. Every day we are separated means that my mother's well-being deteriorates. The restrictions in care homes are too severe, inhumane, and have been in place too long. Let's look at the contrast. If any of us tested positive, we're told to isolate for seven days. In care homes, that's 10 days. If you're a close contact and triple vaccinated, you don't need to isolate. But if you're in a care home, it's 10 days. If you're in a household with COVID, there are no restrictions, but a care home closes for 14 days. The reality is, in a minute, the reality is that this means rolling lockdowns and restricted visiting. Donald McCaskill of Scottish Care has said that such extended periods of isolation are unacceptable, disproportionate, unnecessary and hugely damaging. Cabinet Secretary. Can I thank Jackie Bailey for giving uh, way and uh, while I absolutely recognise the disparities between isolation periods, for example, in care homes and in the general public, can I ask Jackie Bailey, if she is asking us uh, to reduce those isolation periods, what clinical advice has she received and would she publish that or forward that to the government so we could look to see that? Um, if that is her, if that is, uh, her, her case in point. Jackie I Bailey. will quote the First Minister to you in one second, so you might want to listen. But almost one year on from the Scottish Parliament elections, when the SNP vowed to deliver Anne's Law for care home residents, the position is largely unchanged from what I have just described. As of the 14th of February, 92.3% of care home residents in Scotland had received three doses of the COVID-19 vaccine, making these continu continuing restrictions hard to justify. Presiding officer, there is no vaccine for loneliness and isolation. And time and time again, the Scottish Government have implemented restrictions and regulations and have not acted with the same speed when the restrictions are no longer required and when they know that there is real harm caused to people in care homes being separated from their loved ones. The First Minister herself has correctly stated that lateral flow tests are 99% accurate. We should trust and use the science. Staff undertake 12-hour shifts based on a negative lateral flow test. Why can't relatives visit on that basis? They don't interact with large numbers of residents, as the staff do. They don't work across the care home, so there is little risk of widespread transmission. 
This is an easy change to deliver. Relatives need to be recognised as caregivers. They are as important, if not more so, to the well-being of the person in the home. Let's make use of lateral flow tests to open up access. Let's trust the science that the First Minister herself referenced. Now, Scottish Labour have been forced to bring this debate forward today to demand answers and action. For those at the end of their lives, every single day counts. The, SNP, the, the Cabinet Secretary would do well to listen. The SNP Green Coalition cannot continue to drag its heels on strengthening residents' rights. They have the power to do this now. The Government's own records show that updated restrictions have left 21% of care homes likely to be operating under severe restrictions. And yet Anne's law is only discussed when prompted by other MSPs. This is a matter of basic human rights. It's an opportunity to do the right thing for care home residents who so often over the last two years have been let down. It cannot be right that life goes on for the majority whilst others continue to suffer. All parties support early leg legislation and I would urge the Minister to give a clear timetable for bringing this to Parliament so that care home residents can enjoy the same freedoms as the rest of us. Presiding officer, in closing, the two-year anniversary of the pandemic, as it approaches, will cause us all to reflect. We'll be reminded to appreciate small freedoms, like a cup of tea with family or lunch with friends. Let's not forget that for some, those small freedoms are still out of reach. The Scottish Government must act, and they must act now. Thank you, Ms Bailey. I think you need to move the, you need to move the motion. And I move the motion in my Thank name. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, we are very tight for time, so members will have to stick to their allotted time. Then I call on Kevin Stewart uh, to speak to move Amendment 3492.2 for uh, five, five minutes, please, Minister. Uh, thank you, President Officer. And I move the amendment in my name, and I welcome the opportunity uh, to contribute to the debate today. Uh, people living in care homes and their loved ones are undoubtedly uh, amongst those hardest hit by the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, and while action had to be taken to ensure people in care homes were protected, I completely understand the distress caused for people separated uh, from those folks that are most important to them. Uh, and I'd like to thank care home residents, their loved ones and staff for their steadfast commitment that they have made and continue to make during the pandemic to keep themselves and each other safe. Uh, and restricting care home visiting early on has been one of the hardest decisions we as a government have had to take. Uh, throughout the pandemic, we have sought uh, views and experiences of families uh, with loved ones on the impact of visiting restrictions. Uh, and I'm very close to this issue and rightly so. I ensure that I see all correspondence on visiting uh, and I always respond personally. And I have huge empathy with the people who have experienced separation and loss. I will do in a minute. Uh, and many of the stories of separation are, quite frankly, heartbreaking. And I'll give way to Mr Cole Hamilton. Alex oh, Cole Hamilton. I'm very grateful to the Minister for giving way. He recognises the anxiety and the, the stress felt by both staff and families in our care homes. Does he recognise that despair exists to this day? That care home manager in my constituency wrote to me asking the government to stop testing so they would have to stop bringing back in restrictions. And what does he say to those staff and families who believe that while all of society is being released from lockdown, care homes are not? Minister. Um, I have to say to, to Mr Cole Hamilton, I don't quite get his point there, I may have picked him up wrong, but you know, Jackie Bailey's right, we should be testing, and you're saying stop testing, which I don't quite get. And if I can come to, uh, to, to Jackie Bailey's point, um, visitors can visit even uh, during outbreaks, and we have made that quite clear, uh, and we will go further uh, in all of this. And visitors are tested already. And I would welcome any clinical advice that Jackie Bailey has on these issues, because, you know, that may help us counter uh, some of the advice uh, that we are getting. I've got a lot to go through. Our name visitor guidance was introduced last year as a first step towards implementing the changes that we all believe are necessary. All believe are necessary. And this emphasises that care homes should always support visiting, even in an outbreak situation, unless there are truly exceptional circumstances. And the Scottish Government expects care homes and local health protection teams to embed our guidance. As the strategic framework outlines, people living in care homes should be supported 
to enjoy fulfilled, meaningful lives free from restrictions as far as possible. And my officials, in collaboration with the Care Inspectorate, are focused on working with the sector to ensure care homes support visiting and work constructively with those that aren't. I really don't have time. I've got a lot to say, and I'll, I'll give way maybe later. I'd like to thank care home staff, presiding officer, and health protection teams who have tirelessly worked to facilitate regular indoor visiting in over 90% of care homes. These efforts to maximise visiting and adopt the aims of Anne's Law ahead of any new measures show a welcome consensus across the sector. And the development of Anne's Law follows a Care Home Relative Scotland petition on rights for residents to see their loved ones, lodged by Natasha Hamilton, who was unable to see her mother for prolonged periods during the height of the pandemic. Her mother is, of course, Anne Duke, who has now sadly passed away. We fully supported this petition, and I'm pleased to say that there was cross-party support. And in September of last year, we made the commitment in our programme for government to strengthen residents' right and rights and bring in Anne's law. And given the need to move quickly and effectively to ensure that legal rights can be instituted and, importantly, enforced, we have chosen to deliver this through strengthening the health and social care standards using legal powers under the Public Sector Reform Act and to further strengthen rights through primary legislation. As members will be aware, any changes to legislative powers requires us to consult. So later in September, we launched two linked public consultations to seek views and the preferred options for implementation. We have now received the analysis of these consultations. Responses came in from individuals, including families, and a wide range of organisations, including care home providers. The independent analysis showed that there was considerable support for the approach of introducing Anne's Law by strengthening the health and social care standards and then introducing primary legislation. And we published that analysis only last week on the 2nd of March. And I'd like to thank everyone who took the time to, support, uh, to submit their responses. Given the support for these proposals, uh, there is no need to undertake further, further time-consuming legislative processes such as SSIs to make change happen. And I can announce today that using the legal powers under the Public Service Reform Act, we will bring forward by the end of the month uh, those two new strengthened statutory care standards. And this will ensure that visitors can be involved in the care and support of their loved ones and provide a strong emphasis on helping residents and their families remain connect connected. You do need to conclude now, Minister. Uh, uh, officer, finally, this also means uh, that the Care Inspectorate, under their existing legal powers, will now have a strengthened role to ensure that these new standards are implemented and, more importantly, upheld. The Care Inspectorate are committed to this work, and to augment this, we will provide further support and a dedicated resource to enhance the Care Inspectorate's role in supporting residents. You do now need rights. to conclude, Minister. I will You're say well over more time. about primary legislation in my summing up, President. Thank Minister. you very much indeed, Minister. I now call on Craig Hoy to speak to Move Amendment 3492.1 for uh, five minutes, please. Uh, Mr. Thank Hoy. you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I thank uh, Jackie Bailey for bringing forward this important debate before Parliament today. It is just over two years since COVID arrived on Scotland's shores. Two years since fears ran through our communities, two years since schools were shuttered, since businesses were forced to close, nearly two years since elderly and vulnerable care home residents were isolated from their families, losing their lifelines and often losing access to someone who addressed their core care needs, losing the cup of tea, the bit of chit chat, which brought to life the family photos by their bedside. They were shut out from this vital support for months on end. And the purpose of Anne's Law is to ensure that this never happens again. Closing residents in care in their home was, in the words of Natasha Hamilton, a human tragedy. And as we have heard, Natasha's mum, Anne Duke, was one of those who could not secure the comfort of their loved ones during the pandemic. Anne, a former care home therapist who passed away aged just 63 last November, was cut off from her devoted family whilst battling early onset dementia. And this prompted Natasha to launch a petition for Anne's Law a petition that made its way to this Parliament. Deputy Presiding Officer, sadly, many people did not live long enough to see their loved ones one last time. Or they did through a window, or at a distance, or sometimes from behind screens and hazard tape. Our care homes bore the brunt of this pandemic, 
and it has been heartbreaking for their families. Over the last two years, many lessons have been learned and the path ahead looks far less bleak thanks to the vaccine and accurate and widespread testing. But there are still lessons to be learned, there are restrictions to be lifted and questions to be answered. And fundamentally, Minister, there are practical steps like Anne's law to be implemented. And whilst we fully accept Labour's motion uh, and we warmly support it, we also propose an, an amendment uh, today. We seek a commitment to explore, to explore and no more than that, the possible extension of Anne's law to include other settings, such as community and cottage hospital, uh, hospitals, where care is given. Uh, and I, I won't, because I am short on time, I'm afraid. We do not accept, or we are sceptical of the SNP's amendment, which is yet more dither and delay, notwithstanding what the Minister has announced. We must recognise that when it comes to Anne's law, the ball is at the Minister's foot. He is within the penalty box, and the goal of delivering Anne's law is right there. So why then is he, as the SNP too often does, kicking this into the long grass? I, I, don't, I, I must carry on. Today's debate is not about the reasons as to why so many died in our care homes. That will be for Lady Poole's public inquiry to determine. But we do know that the Commonweal described the situation in our care homes as possibly the single greatest failure of devolved government since the creation of the Scottish Parliament. And Deputy Presiding Officer, families need closure so that they can properly mourn those who passed. And Anne's law could help them move on and help them to remember those who died. And we should also remember today the heroic efforts of staff who work in the social care sector, those who were often there when residents passed away. In the early days of the pandemic, COVID was indiscriminately ripping through care homes, killing our friends and family members. And during the early stages of the pandemic, steps were understandably being taken to protect staff and residents from infection. Many staff struggled accessing PPE. Staff went to work knowing whether they would return, or went to work knowing, uh, not knowing whether they would return home infected with COVID. And they formed small armies of infection control. But the de decision to prevent all access to care homes created what has been described as potentially dangerous closed institutions. Institutions where families could not act as the eyes and ears of homes and residents. Leading public health experts back and, uh, Anne's law, and they recognise uh, the care that that will give. In its own consultation, the government was clear in its objectives to recognise that families and friends play an essential role in the health and well-being of people who live in these homes. And it also has an admission that prolonged isolation from family and friends is likely to be detrimental to the welfare of residents. Deputy uh, Presiding Officer, all that campaigners are seeking is to ensure that people who live in adult care homes have rights to see and spend time with the people who are important to them and often who care for them. As Natasha Hamilton said, there is no silver bullet for COVID. We need to learn to live with it. And that can't mean separating families. That is just cruel and barbaric. Anne's husband, Duke, is a retired social worker. Before COVID, he previously spent 40 hours per week by his wife's bedside at her care home in East Kilbride. And speaking before Anne died, he said this, families need each other more than ever, but they are being let down. What he said we need is for human rights of care home residents to be guaranteed in emergency legislation. I believe he said that there would be a majority in parliament for this. Deputy Presiding Officer, I believe there is a majority in this Parliament for Anne's law, and it is clear that now is the time to act, and I move the amendment in my name. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Mr Hoy. I now call on Alex Cole-Hamilton for around four minutes, Mr Cole-Hamilton. Thank you very much indeed, Deputy Presiding Officer. I'm very grateful to Jackie Bailey for bringing this uh, debate to Parliament and offer her our unconditional support. We stand full square behind Labour in their quest to see this law brought through Parliament. Presiding Officer, the late American author and professor, Leo Buscalia, once reminded us that too often we underestimate the power of a touch, a smile, a kind word, a listening ear, an honest compliment, or the smallest act of caring, all of which have the potential to turn a life around. Presiding officer, perhaps we often underestimate the power of simply being able to hold someone's hand to, and to give them a hug, and in some cases at the end of their lives, to kiss them goodbye. But during the pandemic, the absence of this simple and carefree human contact with loved ones was felt acutely by thousands of care home residents in Scotland, and it sadly continues as we speak. 
As the government website itself states, visiting is an integral part of care home life and has a vital role to play in maintaining the mental and physical health and quality of life of residents. It's also crucial for family and friends to maintain contact with their loved ones and to contribute in their own way to their own care. An Age UK survey during the pandemic attempted to record the toll the pandemic has taken on those living in care homes and their families. Presiding officer, the responses were heartbreaking. One respondent said, I feel as though I've locked my parents away and thrown the key away. And another said, time that can never be retrieved. I don't want mum to die without family, a thing she has always dreaded and I promised would not happen. I've spoken to many of my own constituents whose loved one appeared uh, or have been in care homes during the pandemic. Presiding officer, people want to be safe. They want desperately to protect their loved ones, but many felt and still feel that the balance between protecting loved ones from the virus and also maintaining regular and vital contact was not struck. I certainly will from Monica Lennon. Monica Lennon. I'm grateful to Alex Cole Hamilton. Several times in the minister's um, speech, he talked about visitors. He didn't talk about family caregivers. And I think Alex Cole Hamilton has recognised the important contribution that people like Campbell Duke, Natasha Hamilton, who are in this building today, listening to every word. They are not visitors, they are family caregivers. Does Alex Cole Hamilton agree? Alex Cole Hamilton. I'm very grateful for the intervention. I absolutely agree. And, and to clarify my own intervention to the Minister, we are shutting people like that out of our care homes. And, and actually, right now, the, the care home manager who got in touch asked that we end testing, not because she was cavalier about the virus, but because she couldn't abide the restrictions coming in again and again and blocking these people from offering the care that they do. How we've dealt with care homes over the course of the pandemic has been staggering. The virus takes hold in Scotland. People, uh, as it started to, in the foothills of this virus, people with coronavirus were moved from hospital into those homes, causing deaths of many. Contrast that with the latter stages of the pandemic, when, as we've heard countless times, people were triple vaccinated. Many people were still prevented from visiting their loved ones, in, case, in some cases, during the last days and weeks of their life when they needed them the most. This was demonstrably and starkly, uh, tragically the case, as we've heard many times with Anne, uh, who this law is named in honour of. So my party wholeheartedly support the motion in the name of Jackie Bailey. It's vital the Scottish Government does bring forward this legislation or we do it through private members process instead. I'd like to finish, if I may, in the words of uh, Anne's husband in a letter he penned following Anne's death. For seven months, he said, they literally kept us from being with you. You endured the humiliation of being viewed outside from two metres when you needed and required close touching and hugging and someone close enough to whisper, I love you. It is my sincere hope that the government listen both to Anne's and to countless, countless other heartbreaking stories and makes the changes necessary to ensure that no one is ever again denied the right to be with those they love, to simply hold their hand, to kiss their teeth and to give them a hug. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Mr Gold Hamilton. Uh, we now move to the open debate and the first speaker is uh, Paul O'Kane, who joins us remotely uh, for around uh, four minutes, please, Mr O'Kane. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. The importance of today's debate cannot be understated. Our care homes have been at the centre of the pandemic over these past two years. And let me begin by putting on record my thanks to the amazing staff of our care homes, often underpaid and feeling undervalued, who have done all they can to protect people and to support their families. Because we know that people who live in care homes and their families all across our country have suffered immensely. The reality is stark. From 2020 to 2021, there were over 2,500 excess deaths in Scottish care homes, each person a loved one for someone. And we know that there are still many questions to be answered about how this was allowed to happen. And answers must come in the inquiry. But what made pain even worse for families was not only the fact that they had to lose their loved ones, but that they couldn't even be there to hold their hand or be by their side in their final hours. And this wasn't just the case in 2020, when we were all under tight restrictions. It has continued to happen over the following year, as restrictions for the rest of the country eased, care homes had to remain under repeated lockdowns, causing untold harm and trauma for residents and their families. The situation, as I'm sure we can all agree, is terribly tragic. And whilst restrictions are being lifted, and we are continuing to understand our new reality with COVID, we must ensure that this tragedy does not happen again. And that is why I support the motion in Jackie Bailey's name today. The story of Anne Duke has touched the hearts of thousands of people across the country. 
And it is thanks to the continued efforts of her husband Campbell and her daughter Natasha Hamilton uh, that have helped to bring this issue to the fore of public debate. And we should not be hesitating. The government should not be waiting. It should be acting with a sense of urgency that I believe this situation deserves. And I have to say, the SNP's amendment to the Scottish Labour motion today shows that they still don't get it. In fact, I find the amendment quite insulting in its failure to acknowledge Anne and her family and the contribution that they and other campaigners have made. Because the government wants to defer the implementation of Anne's law to the National Care Service, a process that will still take many years. And this is despite the fact that in the recent consultation, Anne's law received virtually unanimous support for people living in an adult care home to have the right to see friends and family. And the respondents also highlighted that it should be law to ensure that parity across our country instead of relying on the discretion of individual care homes. This shows the importance of having Anne's law introduced. Even the actions of the Scottish Government in the care home sector have led to concerns being raised by the Scottish Human Rights Commission about the experience of social care users during the pandemic, saying that the situation in care homes raised concerns under Article 2 of the ECHR and the right to life. However, even now, with a consultation telling the Government that there is support, and with the Commission pointing to failings and concerns, there are still challenges for families being able to see their loved ones on a regular basis. Indeed, care homes have been receiving confusing messages from public health teams about when they should and should not restrict access. And I raised this with the First Minister early January, and there are still issues. Presiding officer, never again can this situation in our care homes across Scotland. Because it is vitally important, as we have heard from other colleagues today, that our loved ones, when they are in the care of somebody else, have the right to see their family and their friends and to have that important contact. And it is time for the Cabinet Secretary and Ministers to listen to relatives and care users, to implement Anne's law and to end the pain of loved ones being parted at the time when they need one another most. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Mr. O'Kane. I now call on Evelyn Tweed, who will be followed by Carol Mochin for around four minutes, please, Ms. Tweed. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer, and thanks to Jackie Bailey for bringing this important debate to the Chamber, and to Nat Natasha Hamilton for her petition in honour of her mother, Anne Duke, highlighting the social isolation caused by COVID restrictions in Scotland's care homes. As we have heard, Anne's Law recognises that families and friends play an essential role in the health and well-being of people who live in care homes. One of the saddest parts of this pandemic has been the enormous sacrifices many made to keep others safe. Restrictions in care homes were particularly difficult and residents were cut off from family and friends. To tackle this isolation, the Scottish Government invested £1.5 million in the initiative Con Connecting Residents in Scotland's Care Homes. Launched in November 2020, this aimed to equip all care homes in Scotland with digital devices, connectivity, training and support to tackle social isolation and help residents enjoy the benefits of online access. However, for many, the transition to digital communication was difficult. Even when the technology worked well, some respondents to the consultation noted their loved ones became more withdrawn and despondent despite daily video calls. I therefore welcome the evaluation of this initiative being undertaken at the University of Stirling in collaboration with the Scottish Government's Technology Enabled Care Programme and the Digital Health and Care Innovation Centre. Dr Grant Gibson, the project leader and expert in dementia care, says it is likely that at least some elements of the switch to a greater use of digital platforms to support social interaction among care home residents will become permanent. Therefore, there is a clear need to evaluate whether the programme was successful and to learn lessons to inform wider initiatives supporting care home residents in the future. I am sure all members in this chamber look forward 
to the delivery of the SNP's manifesto commitment to strengthening residents' rights in adult residential settings. And the Scottish Government will be introducing Anne's Law to Parliament as soon as possible. The Scottish Government is also taking immediate action to ensure that care home residents and their families can benefit from its aims and principles now. This includes working with the Care Inspectorate to update and strengthen the health and care standards, with a strong emphasis on helping residents and their families remain connected. The Scottish Government is also bringing forward new statutory standards <coughs> excuse me, under the Public Services Reform Scotland Act 2010 to help ensure visitors can be involved in the care and support of their loved ones. I thank the Minister of Social Care for his understanding and ongoing hard work to ensure that this legislation is brought to Parliament whilst considering the sensitivities of over 400 consultation respondents. Presiding officer, the overwhelming heartache felt by Natasha Hamilton and many other families across Scotland during lockdown is something that we will remember for many years with a heavy heart. Thank you, Ms Tweed. I now call on Carol Mochen, who will be followed by Sue Webber uh, for around four minutes, Ms Mochen. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. The COVID-19 pandemic has been difficult for everyone up and down the country. Isolation and loss has been felt by so many. But, Presiding Officer, due to the strength of families affected, we know in particular the impact felt by those in our adult care homes. Isolated for so long, disconnected from their families, and unable to have that human connection, those in our adult care homes have been disproportionately impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. And the reality is, despite the, um, the, the, the contribution from the member before me, is families feel this government has not been provided with enough support to them. In my region of the south of Scotland, like others across this country, families have had to go to windows of loved ones for a chat. Some have watched their condition deteriorate without being able to sit next to them. And others have lost loved ones without even being able to say a final goodbye. These are serious matters. It is one of the most heartbreaking stories of the pandemic and that one that we must address now and never allow to happen again. Care homes have been repeatedly closed to visitors during the pan pandemic, often being the first premises to close and the last, the last to reopen. Of course we know how important it is to protect the most vulnerable in the care home setting. But we also know how important it is to strengthen their rights whilst in that setting. Presiding officer, it is therefore crucial that Scottish Labour's call for Anne's Law to uh, be introduced by this Parliament. Anne's Law, as we have heard, would ensure relatives of residents are recognised as caregivers. This is the key point, thus giving residents of care homes the right to be visited by those who matter most to them. This would ensure they have contact that far too many have been deprived of in Scotland's care homes. This is, has simply gone on for far too long. Presiding officer, these measures could be introduced, ensuring relevant infection control guidance is followed and the physical safety of the residents protected. Although the Scottish Government has committed to bringing Anne's law forward, this must, must be done with purpose and promptly, because care home residents and their families are still being failed. Even now, a positive test in a care home for a resident leads to a 10-day self-isolation period, whilst the rules for everyone else has been relaxed. Presiding officer, we know only too well the negative impacts prolonged isolation can have on individuals' mental well-being. Families such as that of Anne Duke are calling for urgent action, and it is crucial that the First Minister and the Health Secretary listen and deliver it. To not act now is to keep families waiting to inflict more difficulty on residents and their loved ones and to exacerbate an issue that has already impacted 
thousands of Scots. Families will not stand for it, and neither will Scottish Labour. In concluding, Presiding Officer, I would once again pay tribute to those who work in our care homes, the residents and their families. The challenges placed in front of them throughout this pandemic have been significant and hard to overcome, but they persist and they fight for change that will benefit the lives of those residents in our adult care homes across the country. Our fight for Anne's Law will continue because we know the impact, impact interaction with loved ones has on each and every one of us, and we will not stop until the Scottish Government Act. Presiding officer, my message to the Scottish Government, to all the members across the chamber, members on all the benches, it is that we must act now in the interest of some of the most vulnerable people in society. I therefore close by urging the Parliament and all the members, and I am looking to the members on the back benches behind the Government, you must act now. Step up, step up and support the families. Support Labour's motion this evening. Thank, Thank you, President you, Officer. Mochen. Thank you very much. I now call Sue Webber, who will be followed by Gillian Martin, for around five minutes. Please, Ms Webber. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. The Scottish Conservatives recognise the impact that COVID restrictions have had on care home residents and their families, and we gladly support the principles which underpin Anne's law. During the height of the pandemic, care home residents were unable to see their loved ones. These steps were taken to protect staff and residents from infection, but undoubtedly, with hindsight, caused much anguish for many residents and their families. Anne's law is the product of a petition to the Scottish Parliament lodged by Natasha Hamilton, who was unable to see her mother for prolonged periods of, of time during the height of COVID-19. The petition, as we have heard, called on the Scottish Parliament to urge the Scottish Government to allow a designated visitor into care homes to support loved ones. And we agree that residents' rights must be strengthened to give nominated relatives or friends the same access rights to care homes and as staff, while following strict stringent infection control measures. Dear me. It is unacceptable that residents and families have been subjected to a postcode lottery. We must ensure that contact between residents and their close family and friends is not subject to haphazard and fluid policies. Family and friends provide critical support to residents' mental and physical health and well-being. And there is no doubt that prolonged isolation from friends and family has a detrimental effect on care home residents. With this in mind, we are disappointed that the SNP government have taken so long to make good on their commitments and now appear to be dragging their feet on introducing the legislation to the Scottish Parliament, despite cross-party support. The commitment to deliver on Anne's law is nearly a year old, and yet the Scottish government have not yet set out a, table, a timetable as to how to deliver it. They have merely said that Anne's law will be introduced to Parliament as soon as practically possible. The SNP allowed over 100 COVID positive patients to be sent to care homes at the beginning of the pandemic. A report from Public Health Scotland found that from the 1st of March to the 31st of May, 113 hospital patients were discharged to care homes despite having tested positive for the virus within hospital. A further 3,061 were not tested at all prior to discharge. Former Health Secretary Jean Freeman admitted that the SNP government failed to take the right precautions when moving elderly patients from hospital into care homes during the pandemic. And despite all of this, the SNP have refused to order a, a public inquiry on deaths from the coronavirus in Scotland's care homes. The Scottish Parliament voted for the Scottish Government to hold an immediate public inquiry to find out what happened in Scotland's care homes during the course of the pandemic. But Nicola Sturgeon merely said, we take note of Parliament's view and that the SNP Government was seeking early discussions on whether and how such an inquiry should be and could be established. Of course, it's not only our elderly that are in residential care or nursing homes. Young adults, Many with physical and learning disabilities are also in care. They too deserve the right to see their families. Just as isolation from friends and family has a detrimental effect on care home residents, it also has a negative impact on young people in similar care settings. And there are stark differences between how the public are restricted compared to care home residents that Carol Mockin has just rightly pointed out. Anne's law has cross-party support. The SNP must stop dithering 
and bring forward the legislation so that residents and families can have confidence when we are moving beyond this failed and broken approach. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Thank you very much indeed, Ms Webber. I now call on Gillian Martin to be followed by Gillian Mackay for um, four minutes, please, Ms Martin. Thank you, President Officer. I'm fully supportive of principles put forward by Anne's Law, and I'm moved by the testimony of her daughter, Natasha Hamilton, and the many others who could not be with their loved ones in care homes at the height of the pandemic. The COVID pandemic threw challenges at us that are unprecedented in living memory. And we all remember the fear of not knowing what COVID-19 was, how it could be spread, who would be most vulnerable and how infectious it could be. In February, March 2020, we had no vaccine. We looked on with fear at the way it ripped through Italian towns, killing thousands of people, wondering what it would do to us and how we would cope when it arrived. It was right to be cautious. We didn't know what we didn't know. And care home residents were particularly vulnerable. We now know that what it is to live through a pandemic. We know a lot more about infection control and we recognise how important emotional support and family care is alongside that control. I, I don't often do personal speeches, but I'm, I'm going to uh, do that now. I last saw my gran, Anna Taylor, in February of 2020. And she was living in Oakbridge Care Home in Knightswood in my friend Bill Kidd's constituency. And when my sister and I visited with my parents, we were joined by her excellent key worker, Bisme a wonderful woman who went above and beyond for my gran. Bisme gently prompted her on who her visitors were. Relatives, she said, with firm commitment. She didn't really recognise her granddaughters, but she still enjoyed seeing us. And there was a bit of determination in her answer to Bisme. She was determined to get that question right. She always recommend, recognised my dad. During the pandemic, there were short periods where her sons and daughter couldn't visit. But overall, COVID infection was limited and quickly contained. Oak Bridge's infection control was outstanding. And when they could, they facilitated my uncle, aunt and father to come in and see their mother, clad sometimes top to toe, full PPE at the height of the pandemic and always rigorously tested up until Anna passed last year. Not from COVID, I must add, but from old age. She was 97 and she'd be absolutely horrified that I'm divulging her age, by the way. <laughs> I spoke to my uncle and my dad this morning about Oak Bridge and they couldn't praise them highly enough. The regular telephone updates from Bisme, the facilitation of safe visiting whenever they could, the rigorous protection of their vulnerable residents from infection and always, always the attention to and understanding of the emotional needs of their residents and their families. They are a model of what care should look like. We've learned a lot in these past two years and if that learning can make the rights and emotional well-being of care home residents firmer and support our excellent care homes to safely facilitate them, I'm all for it. And I'm also grateful for the opportunity in our debate on Anne's Law that gives me to mention the great care that Oak Bridge gave Anna and what they did to ensure that her children could always see her and how much that meant and still means to my family. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ms Martin. I now call on Gillian Mackay, who will be followed by John Mason for around four minutes. Ms Mackay. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I would like to thank Jackie Bailey for bringing forward this debate and pay tribute to Andrew's family for their campaigning on this issue. Social care has seen some of the worst impacts of the pandemic. COVID-19 infections devastated many care homes and residents, and their loved ones were cruelly separated by restrictions on visiting introduced for their safety. The pain of being separated from a loved one when they may be feeling scared, isolated and lonely is terrible. Having had loved ones in hospital over the pandemic that sadly passed away that we couldn't get in to see was devastating. You don't know what you missed, what you might have picked up from their behaviour or what comfort you could have offered them. I'm sure many of those listening to this debate know all too well the feeling of helplessness at not being able to get to their loved ones. When I met with Anne's Law campaigners outside Parliament, they spoke very movingly of the impact this separation has had on them and their family. And I would like to thank them for their incredible campaigning efforts, which have resulted in the government committing, committing to bring forward these changes, as we have heard earlier from the Minister. As we have heard, visiting restrictions can affect care home residents' physical and mental health. Many, many people in care homes have dementia and it may be difficult for them to understand why they cannot see their family members. Interruption to routine and lack of social contact may also cause their health to deteriorate. 
A survey of 128 care homes published by the Alzheimer's Society in June 2020 showed that nearly 80 per cent had seen a deterioration in the health of their residents with dementia due to lack of social contact. Alzheimer's report COVID-19, The Hidden Impact, revealed that, and I quote, the disruption to daily routines, social interactions and health and social care support has had a negative impact on the physical and mental health of people with dementia and carers. Restrictions can also cause particular distress to people who may be in the last years or months of their lives. For those people, the last two years may have robbed them of their last opportunities to spend time with the people they love, and our thoughts and condolences go out to all of them. When visiting was stopped, many people had to turn to remote communications just to stay in touch with residents. But as we've all learned over the last two years, this is a poor substitute for being able to talk to your family and friends face to face, to hug them, to see their body language and facial expressions. Ensuring people in care homes have the right to receive visits from their loved ones must be a minimum. This recognises that friends and family play a vital role in supporting the health and well-being of residents, and that a care home is a person's home, and the right to family and private life should be respected. Social contact must be prioritised in any social care recovery plans. As I and others have said, visiting restrictions were introduced to keep people safe from COVID, but we must also consider the wider risk to well-being posed from limited social contact. This is a delicate balance which we must get right in any forthcoming legislation. While the focus should be on upholding the rights of the resident, it is vital that we consult with staff and the sector as we move forward so that any changes are implemented safely. Legislation alone will not be enough. We need to ensure that it is accompanied by robust safety and infection control procedures, as well as access to PPE and training for staff. I note that organisations such as the Coalition for Care and Support Providers in Scotland and Scottish Care have raised concerns about the wording used in the programme for government and the ANSLAW consultation document, specifically giving nominated relatives or friends the same access rights to care homes as staff. They have raised that this is a greater level of access than is proposed in the consultation questions and that staff have legal duties of care to all residents which visitors do not have. I would be grateful if the Minister could comment on that in his closing speech. Presiding Officer, I would like to end my speech by again paying tribute to Anne Duke's families by welcoming the action announced by the Minister to help visitors be involved in the care of their loved ones and by reaffirming the Scottish Green Party's full support for Anne's law. Thank you very much, Ms Mackay. Um, and before calling uh, our final speaker, John Mason, just a reminder that any colleague who has participated in the debate needs to be back in the chamber for the closing speeches, which will follow Mr Mason in around four minutes' time. Mr Mason. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Presiding Officer, for the opportunity to speak. Uh, and I also fully agree with the motion's main theme in that continuing contact with family and friends when someone has moved into a care home is incredibly important for all concerned. Our own family was in this position as my mother went into an Abbeyfield care home in Rutherglen in January 2019 and stayed there for over two years and she'll, until she died at the age of 93 just a year ago in March 2021. Therefore, we were restricted in seeing her for the last year of her life. In the warmer weather, it was easier as we could all sit outside. But as we got to the end of 2020 and into 2021, it did become quite a struggle to arrange visits with one of the family sitting outside for half an hour while she was all wrapped up and sitting just inside the door. So we were not enthusiastic about the restrictions in place. However, we thawed them. But I have to say that this care home was tremendous. They are a smaller home in the third sector. They had a friendly, homely atmosphere while still being professional. And up to the point of my mother's death, they had had no COVID in the home whatsoever. Now, I should probably say that I used to work for a care home company in the 1990s as an accountant. And I know that some families are reluctant to see an elderly relative going into a care home, feeling that somehow it is second best. But as far as we as a family were concerned, and I should say it was originally my mother's suggestion when she was younger, the care home was the best option for my mum. It became her home. She belonged there. It was the best place for her and the care she received was better than the family could have provided. When it comes to the right to visit, absolutely, in normal times, a resident in a care home must have the right to receive visitors. 
and family should have the right to visit. In fact, sometimes it is the family who need the visit more than the actual person in the home. But I would suggest that there is a balance to be struck. The right to visit and be visited goes along with the duty of the care home to promote the well-being of all its residents and to protect them from harm, be that physical, mental or emotional. And that is not an easy balance to be struck. Once again, we are into the area of competing rights, the rights of the individual resident, the rights of the resident as a, residents as a whole, the rights of the families involved, and that is not even to mention the rights of the staff. If there had been unrestricted or even less restricted visiting at my mother's home, I suspect she might well have caught COVID and died earlier on. Now, I accept that that would not have been a tragedy as she was 93 and had lived a good and full life. However, I am happier that she avoided COVID and lived that bit longer. So I personally, I am very pleased that visiting was restricted, but to be frank, other members of our wider family would have lent more to the side that it would have been better for her to have had more visits for her mental and emotional well-being, even if that had shortened her life a little. I do not believe there is any absolute right and wrong in this. No two families are the same. No two of us in the one family are the same. And no two care homes are the same. So I think this proposed legislation is going to have to be very carefully worded in order to get the balance right. And I think inevitably there will be some who feel it goes too far in one direction and others who feel it goes too far in the other direction. And while I think most of us today are agreeing that visiting rights should be placed in statute, I think we also need to agree that in very exceptional circumstances, these rights might have to be temporarily suspended. Therefore, I'm grateful for the opportunity to discuss these issues today. COVID has been an incredibly hard experience for many families, including mine, and we all want to learn from these experiences. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Mr Mason. We now move to the wind-up speeches. I uh, call firstly Sandish Gulhani for around five minutes. Mr. Dr Gulhani. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And I draw members to my entry in the Register of Interest as a practising NHS doctor. The Scottish Conservatives support the principles underpinning Jackie Bailey's motion, and we seek to extend this to include those receiving care in other health and care settings, such as hospitals and residential care facilities, and would like to see uh, us review this. As Craig Hoy reminded us, Anne's Law is the product of a petition to the Scottish Parliament by Natasha Hamilton. Natasha was unable to see her mother and Duke for prolonged periods during the height of the COVID-19 pandemic and urged the Scottish Government to allow a designated visitor into care homes to support loved ones. Every one of us recognised the impact that COVID restrictions have had on care home residents and their families. During the height of the pandemic, care home residents were unable to see their loved ones. Steps taken to protect staff and residents from infection, but undoubtedly caused anguish for many residents and their families. As an elderly patient told me, for almost two years, you've all saved my life, but I haven't lived. Friends and families play a vital role in the health and well-being of residents, but also support their care, often complementing the support provided by care home staff. Prolonged isolation from family and friends has been very detrimental to the welfare of adult care home residents. We agree that residents' rights must be strengthened to give nominated relatives or friends the same access rights to care home as staff while following stringent infection control measures. And I cautiously welcome Minister Stewart's announcement in his opening statement, but as he ran out of time so could not give us further information, I shall be listening intently during his closing remarks. But we should be clear that getting Anne's law in place as soon as possible will help stop the suffering of loneliness. Craig Hoy reminded us of the importance of family, and Alex Cole Hamilton correctly spoke of the vital nature of human contact. I often speak to relatives who are agonising over the decision to put their partners, parents, loved ones into a care home. They feel they are not doing enough for them. They feel they're abandoning their loved one. This is in normal times, but the idea of not being able to hold their hands, give them a kiss or a hug is unimaginable. Absolutely. Can I thank uh, Sandersh Gohani for taking the intervention? Um, I had a case um, in East Kilbride, um, quite, quite heartbreaking. Um, a family contacted me and described visiting their mother 
uh, in a care home just up the road as being like a prison visit. Does the member agree with me that we need to move on from a situation like that? Dr Gulhani. I, I do agree. We, we can't be in a situation uh, where families feel that because it's about that loved touch, that caring nature that we need to give to our care home residents. Paul O'Kane is correct in talking about how the SNP amendment does not get it. The design of the National Care Service will take too long, and we need to ensure not a single person suffers as Anne Duke and her family had to suffer. Evelyn Tweed was correct in speaking of how technology caused patients to withdraw and decline. Let's think about that ourselves. If we only speak over technology, phone or video, it does not give us the same feelings of warmth as meeting that same person, be it friends or family. I believe technology can help, but it cannot be the only interaction. Touch is vital to the well-being of people, especially those in care homes. Sue Weber spoke of how we have all been in agreement over Anslow for over a year. Cross-party support for a law that is simply right. Gillian Martin's moving story shows us just how important Anne's law is to ensure everyone can receive the excellent care that her grandmother and her family received. Presiding officer, if the Scottish Government is serious about Anne's law, it should expedite this and not kick it down the road for inclusion in the Government's proposed National Care Service Bill. The SNP's record on matters relating to our vulnerable in our care homes is a difficult read. The impact of the coronavirus on Scotland's care home as a result of the SNP's decisions has been described as the single biggest failing of devolution, and there have been many. On Anne's law, the government appears to be dragging their feet. We call on the SNP Green government to stop dithering and bring forward legislation so that residents and families can have confidence that we are moving beyond this failed and broken approach. Thank you. Thank you, Dr Gulhani. And I call on the Minister to close for four minutes, please. Um, thank you very much, President Officer, and I'd like to thank uh, all members um, for the contributions that they have made today. Um, this is an extremely important debate, as we all know. I'd also like to thank uh, Natasha, Natasha Hamilton, Campbell Duke and other uh, members of Care Home Relative Scotland uh, who have been at the very heart um, of discussions and you know it is as we have heard today um, very very tough indeed to hear um, some of the stories that folk have gone through and I agree um, with uh, what many members have said uh, Graham Simpson included there's nothing better in this life than a bosie uh, a cuddle uh, in the northeast uh, vernacular um, and you know it is extremely important that we do our level best for that family connection because that lack of connection with loved ones especially earlier on in the pandemic has had a devastating impact on some people so thanks for the heartfelt accounts that you share today um, and i'm sure that everyone in this chamber um, has heard from our constituents and from families who have loved, loved ones in care homes uh, many of the, the kinds of stories that we've heard today. Um, we know that the recommended measures that have been put in place have been necessary to safeguard people uh, for whom the ongoing risks of the virus are significant. Um, I know that we have acted on the best possible adv advice um, from our public health teams and our clinical advisors. Uh, and I'm uh, meeting with uh, Care Home Relative Scotland tomorrow uh, with some of those clinical advisors so that there can be a broader discussion about the reasoning for some of the things that are currently in play. And I'm more than willing to talk to any member around about that and give them access to the clinical advice that we have. And if folks have got different, differing clinical advice, I'm more than happy to look at that, as is the government. Uh, ve very briefly. Yeah. Monica Lennon. Grateful to the Minister. Is the clinical advice telling you to delay Anne's law? And if not, why is it not happening, Minister? Minister. The, the clinical advice is very, very complex indeed. And I'll come on to exactly what we are about to do here um, uh, as, uh, as I uh, move on in my speech today. Um, what I would say um, in all of this is that um, I can assure you that I, the Cabinet Secretary, the Government, um, feel the pain of the folks who have, uh, have had to go through uh, these periods of isolation. None of that has been lost on me um, or the government. Uh, and being able to simply pop in and see those that are most important to us um, on a daily basis 
um, it's just it's hard to believe that that cannot happen, but we have had that pandemic. Um, and as many have pointed out, including John Mason, uh, where visits took place, often those were outside at the beginning uh, for short periods with distancing taking place, um, or they have been, as Julian Martin pointed out, adherence to infection protection measures inside. And this is not what any of us are used to, and I recognise that this has been particularly hard. Uh, the experiences and the views expressed have illustrated that families and carers are essential partners in supporting the well-being of, uh, of uh, their family members in care homes. Uh, and we have heard today um, that they play an essential role, often, in people's care, uh, whether that is supporting with eating and drinking, communicating wishes or emotional care, and connection uh, with the outside world. Now, a number of members have uh, accused us of trying to kick all of this into the long grass. I think that was uh, Mr Hoy's words, or dithering, I think, was uh, Ms Weber's words. Let me be quite clear here. Let me be quite clear here. The legal standards uh, that we are putting in place will provide an immediate route to implement Anne's law, as the care inspectorate is required to take account of them within its inspection and enforcement regime. An immediate route to implement Anne's law is what this change to standards does. And that is important that families out there know that that is the case. Now, what we also you need to conclude, Minister, uh, is well underpin, that, underpin that in legislation and take account of the likes of the amendment that Mr Hoy uh, put forward today. And I'm not going to preempt the vote, but if it's preempted, I'm willing to uh, talk to Mr Hoy further about that, because we've got to get it right, not only just in the care home settings, but in the hospital settings and in the other care settings. And I'm willing to talk to any member around about how uh, we move forward in all of this and get it right. Thank, Thank you, you very much Mr. indeed, Minister. We are pressed for time. And I call on Monica Lennon to close the debate for up to five minutes, please, Ms Lennon. Thank you, Presiding Officer. This has been a short debate, but a hugely important one. In closing the debate on behalf of Scottish Labour, I want to thank everyone who has taken part and those who are listening, including Campbell Duke and Natasha Hamilton, who are here in the building with other members of the Care Home Relative Scotland group. Um, and I would say to those who have uh, plugged Natasha's petition, she is 97 signatures short of 100,000 signatures. So if you haven't signed it, please do, to do so and, and share it on social media. Um, I want to be really clear, this debate is not about the principles of Anne's Law. It's not about the case for Anne's Law. It's about when of Anne's Law. And what we haven't heard from the Minister is a date. And I know that Evelyn Tweed was thanking the Minister for all his hard work, but we've been here before, and I'll come on to the debate that we had back in 2020, when we all agreed the principles of Anne's Law. So today it's about delivery. It's about delivering on a promise to give effect to Anne's Law. It's not about one manifesto. We heard about the SNP manifesto, but Sue Webber and others are correct. This has cross-party support. We're all on the same page. And I want to thank um, the, the former Health Secretary, Jean Freeman, who was very accessible and approachable and had regular meetings with colleagues across the chamber. And she said in that debate back in 2020, that you know, she recognised the unintended consequences of the lockdowns. She talked about the importance of, of touch, and she also gave evidence to the COVID-19 committee on that same day. Um, that gave people hope that things were going to change, that we're going to use all the tools that Jackie Bailey and others have talked about in terms of PPE, in terms of vaccines, in terms of testing. We have all these tools, but actually, Minister, today, if you look at your own figures published on the Scottish Government website, we're actually going backwards because more care homes have put in restrictions. There's a higher number of care homes this week who are only allowing essential and outdoor visits. Have you seen the Scottish weather than last week? So we need to look at that and we cannot be complacent. What we're hearing loud and clear from our constituents and from the Care Home Relative Scotland Group presiding officer is that people living in care homes are being treated differently from the rest of society. Jennifer Dick's mum lives in a care home in Edinburgh. The care home put in additional restrictions on 21st of February. That's been extended to the 15th of March. 
Jennifer asked if she could take her mum, who's tested negative for COVID, a short drive or even take her back to her own house for a visit. She was told no by the manager and the restrictions, I believe, are now in place until the 22nd of March. So when the minister meets with the group tomorrow, I hope these are the matters that he will discuss. But I hope he'll also go and apologise to Campbell Duke, to Natasha and others who are listening today, because it's great to hear the tributes from Gillian McKay and others about the importance of the motion and the principles. But the government amendment today, if you're voting for that amendment, you're erasing Anne Duke out of that. The, 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 the motion amplifies the voices of the people who are asking us to get this right. It's not my opinion or Jackie Bailey's opinion or Alex Cole Hamilton or anyone around the chamber. It's what the group have been saying and they don't feel listened to, presiding officer. But back in October 2020, for those members who are new, there was a motion tabled in my name, recognising the importance of family caregivers. We didn't talk about visitors, Minister. We were talking about caregivers. And at that point, 200 days had passed. Jackie Bailey's right, it's now two years down the line. But we all agreed in that debate. We all agreed about those in principles, but yet we don't have Anne's law. We even paid tribute to uh, politicians in Ontario for legislation. They were progressing more than a visitor act. We talked about caregiving and congregate care settings. And I think that the Tory uh, amendment today is, is, is correct and we will be able to, to support that. Um, I want to talk about two women. Holly is 37 and Alice Hall is 97. Holly uh, has a learning disability and she lives in a care home and she wrote to the minister, I believe at the end of January, and she said, it feels like I'm back to square one again. It feels like I'm a prisoner again. She feels forgotten. Alice, who's 97, knows that our time on this earth is limited, but Alice's daughter, Sheila, said, after two long years, three vaccines, surviving COVID, surviving isolation, my mum needs to have the same freedom as everyone else in Scotland. This is urgent. I think my colleague Paul O'Kane conveyed that. What we need now is to stop the dithering, to stop the discrimination, and on behalf of Care Home Relative Scotland, I want to say, Minister, please return Bring back to our care homes the, the love and the hope and joy that is miss, missing. People want joy, they want hope. People living in care homes, in their own homes, as being rightly said, don't deserve to be treated differently. Yes, protect them using all the tools that we have, infection prevention control, but stop making excuses. Just get on and do this, please. I beg you on behalf of Anne's family and all those other families who are living through this today. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Ms Lennon. Uh, that concludes the debate. It's time to move on to the next uh, item of business.